Hi everyone, it's Stella Grisant, and I am so excited for today's Facebook Live. This is day four of my five-day series, and yesterday, uh, in yesterday's Facebook Live, uh, Amy brought up that she's kind of in a difficult situation where she wants to break up with her financial advisor because of his difference in politics. And yesterday, hey Brian, yesterday we were talking about how to set healthy boundaries. And just to give you a little bit of a review of like day one through four, because it's going to feed into what we're doing right now. Um, we talked about setting healthy boundaries because healthy boundaries really help us be who we want to be easily. And the reason why it's so important for us to create conditions for us to be our most alive and engaged self is because, well, who doesn't want to be that? Um, but more importantly is when there's a lot of crap going down, whether it's at work or at home, our attention is instantly attached to what's wrong, bad, or threatening. And when that happens, our negativity bias is triggered and it kind of just continues to focus on all the crappy stuff. And so we end up having a worldview that is really dim. And there have been experiments done on our vision, and I talked about this, I think, in the in the day one, where depending on your mood, you will literally see differently. If you are in a negative mood, your eyes tend to just go into one particular area on a screen and stay focused. This isn't an experiment, right? So it's not like if you're reading email, you're only seeing one sentence. But imagine if you were in a bad mood and you were asked to look at a picture on a screen, your eyes would tend to go uh, and focus on just one particular area. Whereas if you're in a positive mood, your eyes go around the periphery of the, of the screen and then they kind of sprinkle throughout. So you see the bigger picture. Your reality is expanded when you're in a positive mood. You literally see more. And so we want to direct our attention, not just on the stuff that sucks, which you need to look at, but also managing our thoughts and our minds so that we are um, setting ourselves up to see more. And so we talked about how it's important to, to create a vision. And I gave you guys that free exercise, which I hope you um, downloaded. It's called uh, a vision generator. And I'll just for, I see a lot of new people on here. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Margaret. Hey, Lydia. Um, so here's a really great, this is my favorite exercise that I do with any clients. And I do this when we start working together right away. It's called a vision generator and you can get it. I just put the link up. And the reason why I have people do that first is because we need to get clear on what is it like when you're your most alive? What is it like when you're your most engaged self, when you're most free and light? Because we need to be taking action to support you in getting to that destination. That's, that's, that's where we go first and we work backwards to design your goals from that state. And boundaries, what they do is they make it easier for you to stay in the right lane so that you're moving towards that vision. And so yesterday when Amy brought up one of the boundaries she wanted to create, and I don't think Amy's on yet, she wanted to break up with her financial advisor because he would always talk about politics in person and she has very different views than him and it made business really difficult. And so uh, Amy was the inspiration for the topic today, which is how to master difficult conversations. And because I like to keep these really kind of quick because it's late at night and I don't know, I want to go to bed and you guys probably want to go to bed. Um, I, I, I like to keep these short, but I do webinars and trainings and so on that are, are much deeper. So I'm going to break this up into two parts. So I'll do first part tonight and then the second part tomorrow night. Cool? Um, all right. So the first thing I wanted to cover um, when it comes to having a difficult conversation is 
you know, a, the mistake that most of us make when we're dealing with someone who's being super passive aggressive or actually super aggressive and violent, um, or just where you're having a disagreement or you don't know how to bring something up. There's something you want to ask for. There's a change you want to create, but you don't know how to even start the conversation. What most of us end up doing is obsessing about the words, obsessing about what do we say, obsessing about how do we even set up the meeting or where do we have this conversation? Like Amy, one of Amy's main questions yesterday was like, do I do it in person or do I do it over email? And while I think those are important, obviously it's important to to feel prepared and clear on what you want to ask for and what words you want to use. What's even more important than that is your energy going into that conversation. So I'm just going to say that again. It's your energy. The number one thing, the most important thing when it comes to mastering difficult conversations is your energy. And what do I mean by your energy? So we know from a variety of research and there's kind of like mixed results, but overwhelmingly most of the studies point to that over 85% of communication is nonverbal. And so if it's nonverbal, it means a lot of communication is not about the words you say. It's about something else. And that something else is what we're highly attuned to as human beings and just having a feeling. So, you know, maybe you've gotten into a fight with your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your mom, your dad, whatever. And maybe they said to you, I'm sorry. But you know they weren't really sorry, right? Or maybe they, they asked you to do something and they asked you really politely, but you know underneath that politeness, they were seething or mad or they didn't really mean it. And so the reason why your energy is so important is because as human beings, even if it's unconscious, we know when you're bullshitting. We know when you're resenting us. We know when you're pissed off. And even if you put on a really nice smile and you're at work and you're totally professional and you're making all your points or you're asking for your raise and everything is totally rational and you deserve this. But if you're feeling like a victim in that conversation, like you've been taken advantage of or like you resent the people you work with and how they're not paying you enough, well, guess what? they're going to feel that energy. It's transmitting to them. And the reason why it transmits is because our emotions are contagious. Just like the flu, you can catch someone else's emotions. And I, I, I'm going to put my phone on silent. I'm realizing it's buzzing. So, um, so the reason why our emotions are contagious. There's a few reasons, but one of the, the things that we as human beings do is mirror each other's emotions or mirror, mirror each other's facial expressions. So if you've ever seen a mom and her baby and she's like smiling and then the baby smiles, or if you've ever walked into a room and you see someone's upset and they're looking at you and they're really upset, you, you kind of mirror the same thing. And we do that all the time. And that's a really cool thing. That's a way that we develop empathy because by me doing what you're doing with your face, I can kind of start to understand what you're feeling. And so it's through all these subtle cues that we are, and, and there's more than that, that we're transmitting each other's emotions. And so if you're feeling like a victim, if you're feeling pissed off, if you're feeling resentful or whatever it is, that is going to transmit into the conversation. And that is not going to support you in getting to a better place with this person. So that is number one. So how do you adjust your energy? How do you show up in a conversation in a way that, um, in a way that will support you in making progress with this relationship or in a way that will support you in, um, in, in achieving the results that you want. So the f there's a few ways. Um, going back to the vision generator that I shared um, in the link, workhappinessmethod.com slash vision, um, by 
getting clear on how you want to be, on who you want to be, and then taking actions to be that, which means like every day uh, expressing your values through your behaviors, through your decisions. When you are actively doing that consciously, because you're doing it all the time, by the way, you're being who you want to be all the time, but you're not appreciating that you're doing it. So it has to be conscious because if you're not appreciating how you actually are in alignment with your values, it, it doesn't matter as much because your negativity bias is so it's so strong that you're just going to continue to pay attention to how you're not doing enough, how you're not being enough. So it's really important when you're actively in, when you're actively consciously making decisions that will take you closer to that state, that vision to recognize it. And when you do that, the result is that you develop a natural confidence. Confidence is earned. It is not learned. It's not like a learned skill. Like how do I show up and be more confident in my request to make more money or in my, or in my conversation with my boss who's like really pissing me off lately, right? You don't learn to be more confident. Sure, there's things you can do. You can stand in a power pose that helps. But really what's going to give you true power is knowing that you know what you want and you know that no matter what is happening around you, you have control to express how you want to be in this world. That is what really develops confidence. So it takes a little bit of time. Like it's not like you're, you know, you're going to go into a, some, you know, it's not like if you want to go into having a conversation tomorrow morning, you're going to do all this stuff and be who you want to be. And, you know, suddenly, ta-da, you're ready. Sometimes it takes time. And we're in like a text um, we're very quick to text. We're very quick to respond online and do whatever, uh, just respond very quickly to people. And so I just want to like hang back and be like, before you have any difficult conversations, pause and give yourself some time to gather yourself. If you're so pissed off and you want to go and have this conversation, they're not going to hear you because they're just going to feel your anger. And so what you really want to do is give yourself enough time to at least return to neutral or, at, or get into a positive space. So one tool that I recommend in addition to the getting your vision and, and doing that, that takes sometimes maybe you might need a little bit more support and you can talk to me about coaching to figure that out. Um, but one thing that I think would be really helpful. And I actually do this. This is my daily ritual. I, I do this in the morning. So before I wake up, before I put my feet on the ground, this is what I try to do. And this is if Lenore does not wake up before me. <laughs> so if she wakes up before me, then it doesn't always happen. But what I like to do is a, kind of a loving kindness meditation. Have any of you guys heard of a loving kindness meditation? Anybody? Hey, Jody. Hey, hey, Claudia. Okay, so for those of you who haven't heard of it, now it's like it's hard not to fix your hair when you can like see yourself. <laughs> um, so a loving kindness meditation is a Buddhist practice. It's not a religious practice. It's not, it's, um, it's basically a practice of just wishing someone well. And you can Google loving kindness meditation. I'm just going to put it here. Uh, and so you guys can see the language, you can copy and paste and Google, and you will see like a million different loving kindness meditations. They have the same gist. And the gist is that you start with someone who you feel it's so easy to love. You don't have any friction with them. So I usually go and I start with Lenore and I close my eyes and I wish her to be healthy, to be happy, to be safe, to be free to be herself. Uh, to know that she is loved, and whatever else comes to mind. And what that does, if, I, if I'm sitting quietly with that, it will generate some, some softness in, the, in my chest. I'll start to feel a little bit more relaxed. And then what I'll do is I'll then move on to Ilya, my husband, or I'll then do my family, um, 
Yeah, Benjamin, you've heard of it. So I'll then move on to um, my family. I'll move on to my team. I'll move on to my clients. And I will go as far as I can in terms of time. And sometimes I'll just like visualize groups of people together so I can do it faster. And I will also do it for anyone that I encounter in that day or anyone that I will be meeting with. I actually did it for all of you guys already today, right before this session. And what it does is it just, well, first of all, there's been research on it, which is really cool because it shows that if you do a loving kindness meditation, I think for six weeks, you can, you actually start to feel happier. You have greater life satisfaction. So there's, there's research that backs this up, but what it does is it just gets your energy, it opens your heart up and it gets you singing in the right tune, in the tune that you want to be singing when you go into that conversation. You're going to be more open, you're going to be more kind, and this is something that you want to do for the people that you actually have challenges with. And I know that's really hard. You're like, what? I'm going to do a loving kindness meditation for someone who's pissing me off? Yes. <laughs> yes. And so if it feels like a challenge for you to do that, then do it for like 30 days if you can before you even have the conversation. If you can't wait that long, just do your best. Do a minute. Um, wish them well because you're holding on to that anger or resentment is only hurting you because it's not, a, it's not allowing you to move forward. So that is one thing that I do to get my energy amplified and positive. And when I do this, I get free stuff. Like I'll just I'll just be sitting on a plane, the person next to me will be like, "Hey, would you like an apple?" Like this happens all the time. Or someone will give me something like a free donut or I don't know, some people will give me their seat. Like random strangers will say hello to me and look me in the eye when I'm walking down the street. So people are attuned we're all attuned to one another's energies. And so when you do that, I, I challenge you to do this. I want you to do this like tomorrow morning, or you can even do it tonight and just notice what you notice. And um, so that is a regular practice that I just have in my life uh, to make sure my energy is in the right place when I'm meeting with people. And so I recommend that to everyone. And then... And then, you know, you can't escape your own values and being clear on those and your own vision. And so you have to get clear on that stuff too. And so once your energy is in the right zone, then you can have the dialogue. Then you'll find things just shift like that. Uh, I had a client, I had a client who um, was trying to get a raise for over a year. And she was one of the top performers, but she wasn't getting it. And we worked together and I coached her on this and, and she got clear on her values and she started acting how she wanted to act. And she didn't get her raise right away, but she got it within the year. She got a 15% raise. And then the following year, she got another 15% raise, which does not happen in that organization. So, but she had to change her energy. So, that's my challenge to you guys tonight is practice a loving kindness meditation. Notice what you notice. Do the vision generator. And of course, I'm here for you if you don't want to do any of this alone. Uh, definitely check out the work happiness method. Tomorrow is the last day where you can save and get a bunch of different bonuses. Uh, the work happiness method, for those of you who have never heard about it, is my eight-week virtual coaching program where each week you get a, a, a video training that takes you through how to figure out your vision, how to figure out your values, how to figure out your boundaries, how to, how to stay light when you feel a lot of fear, how to be playful, how to set goals that excite you and that you will stick with, uh, how to master difficult conversations. We have a whole section on this. And so each week you get a training and then every two weeks, we talk and we talk in a very intimate group. It's usually no more than five to 10 people. And I coach you on what's going on for you. And it is phenomenal, the results that people, that, that happen. And you can go onto the website and you can see people's videos and how they transform. But, um, but the Mastering Difficult Conversations is probably one of the most powerful parts 
because so often we stay quiet and we just expect people to know what we want, but they don't. And it's so funny that sometimes we're avoiding having a conversation for so long. And then after you do this work, you're like, it's so easy. It took 15 minutes and you're like, I can't believe that (laughs) I've been avoiding this conversation and stressing about it in my mind for so long. And it was so easy. So I know you can do it. And I know you can do all of this. And again, the most important thing is to enter that room with love in your heart, with kindness and curiosity. Like, I wonder what's going to happen. And that is the biggest thing you can do um, to set yourself up for success. So hi, Ditha. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Deborah. So, uh, so yeah, you guys, I hope that this was helpful. Did you, do you guys have any questions? I'm happy to hang on for questions. And I also am happy to like not call out your name because I realize some of this may be sensitive. So I can like, if you type in your question, but I guess everyone can see you typing too, but, um, any questions on any of this? You can also message me. Uh, and tomorrow what we'll be talking about is I'll be taking you through the nonviolent communication framework, which is an excellent framework for figuring out what to say. So today we talked about how do you need to show up in that conversation? How do you need to say it? Cause I think that's actually more important. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about what do you actually say? And tomorrow that's going to be eight 30 Eastern time. Uh, and same place. And for those of you who want to check out the work happiness method, I'm just entering the info. And if you join now um, with the work happiness method, you get a number of bonuses. You get a bonus on how to ask for the money you deserve, how to ask for the appreciation and recognition you deserve, how to deal with toxic coworkers. And I feel like there's something else. Oh, yeah. And there's two spots left for a private one-on-one session for me. So the first two people who sign up uh, by tomorrow will also get a private coaching session with me. So that's it, you guys. I hope you are all well, and I wish you just joy and bliss, and may you be delighted and awed by the outcomes of these conversations. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.